Good morning, Tim Sykes here, uh, filming this after about an hour and a half of trading just after 11 a.m. Um, Eastern crazy, 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 crazy market. Um, and if you understand that, leave a comment underneath this video saying, I love this crazy market. Um, already made five grand on the day, traded decently, not great. Um, I was on the right track. I missed a few plays. Um, I took some plays. Um, it's pretty crazy that, you know, five grand uh, in like 90 minutes is, is kind of the average lately uh, for me. Um, but again, you should always try to do better. Never just say, oh, look at how special I am making five grand. It's a hot market, okay? It's not me. I might be prepared. I might know the patterns well. Um, but there's so much more opportunity. Um, and I'm sorry, I'm not going to talk about student trades today. There's so many of you guys tweeting me and in the chat room. I appreciate it. Um, I am giving a live uh, trading challenge webinar uh, later today. So uh, if you're in my challenge, ask questions. If you're not in my challenge, get in my challenge. I'm going to post a link just below this video. Um, it's where I do, you know, two, three, sometimes four live webinars per week. Not just me. It's also, uh, Tim Grittani, who's, you know, now made over $2 million this year already in four months, four and a half months. Um, he's over 11 million in profits. He gives weekly webinars. Um, uh, Mark Crook, he's over around 2 million. He's up a few hundred thousand this year. Um, Tim Lento, he's closing in on half a million in profits. Uh, Michael Good. Um, so many people in the trading challenge community who are just doing so amazing. So um, just wanted to mention them. You know, I'm not trying to ignore them, but I just got to focus on my trades and the lessons, uh, what I think you can learn from uh, these trades. So five grand a day obviously keeps the real job away. Um, it's just the morning. You know, I still might make some more trades, but I have been over trading a little bit. Um, I think it's also important just to be a little introspective. Um, don't just say, oh, look how much money I'm making or losing, you know, what did you do right? And what did you do wrong? So, um, you know, my, my best play today, and I've traded it twice, uh, was SIML. SIML was a winner from the other day. It's up 200% right now. As I type this, look at recent runners, um, spiked a lot this day. I kept buying it that day too. Then it crashed yesterday. Um, no play there today back with some, you know, rosy projections from the CEO. Will they play out? I don't know. I don't care. Um, it's a big percent winner. You got to go with what's hot. I mean, PHUN is crazy up 200%, but let me just show you intraday. I actually have not traded this. It's tough for me to trade a stock that keeps getting halted like this. Um, but they're up 200% on a very, a suspicious press release partnering in quotes with Hewlett Packard, even though if you read the press release, um, they're basically just using Hewlett Packard. You know, I have a Hewlett Packard printer around here somewhere too. I don't know if I should put out a press release saying I'm partnering with them. So very questionable stuff, but congrats to Long's. I saw a few students uh, nailed it, uh, buying it in the ones, selling it in the twos. Um, that's pretty much, you know, best case scenario on a play like this. But there are so many other plays. Um, I want to talk about SHRMF because this has been a recent volatile stock. It's down today, but, you know, again, I, I look at recent winners. I look to dip by them into panics. Um, I had a little profit on this little dip by here, even more than seven days ago. If you scroll out uh, to 14 days, it was actually a, a better dip by uh, in here. Um, you know, but it's had a, just a huge run up. And so I look for these, these kinds of, you know, crashes. And on this one, I'm not going to lie. I was a little too early, uh, with my, uh, dip by, um, right here. Uh, I still made, you know, roughly a thousand bucks, um, buying in the one thirties, selling in the one forties, but the, the ultimate panic and bounce um, I was one drop too soon, you know, like I wisely avoided this drop cause it wasn't a big enough percentage, uh, drop here. I was like, no, it's, it's dropping, but still not a big enough percentage here. I took, I took the, the bait, whatever you want to call it. Um, and I was buying it on this thinking that it could bounce back to the one fifties. Um, but as it turned out, you know, this was a weak bounce. It had one more panic. I, I wisely got out when I saw that the, the bounce wasn't happening. But, you know, some people say like, well, Tim, like you're just wrong. 
I was early, okay? And this is the thing. A lot of you guys um, and girls, you know, you're too late, you're too early. That doesn't mean that it's a bad trade. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't do it. Um, welcome to the game, okay? It's not an exact science. But if you're on the right track, I still take this as a win. First of all, I made some money because, you know, I recognized that the bounce was was failing, so I protected myself. But whether I made 1000 or lost 1000 I was still on the right track because it was one more panic and it bounced, you know, 15%. So this is what I was looking for on my dip buy. Um, did not get it. Um, sometimes trades just don't, you know, go according to plan. And that's okay. Um, it's really not the end of the world. Hold on. Let me just go back to this for a second. Sorry. I'm, I literally just work on one laptop. Um, probably should be more organized, but I just really haven't had time. I also want to talk about this one other stock I made a thousand on roughly on uh, CIDM. And this one, you know, again, uh, right track a little too early. And this one's a very choppy. You know, this is another thing. Like some of you guys and girls, um, again, like you, you're so critical of yourselves. You're like, God, I wish I would have known. Like some of these stocks are just choppy and you have to give yourself a break. Uh, but CIDM, again, you know, very similar to GNUS uh, with digital online content. Um, I was trading it in here on this spike day. It never really holds its spikes for very long, but it does have some fantastic spikes. So learning from the past, recognizing former runners um, and trading them when they have uh, news. Again, CIDM is just basically expanding the reach of their online content. You know, they're putting it on Amazon. Uh, and, you know, you can dress up a whole press release very similar to what PHUN and Hewlett Packard did. You know, I can put anything on Amazon, right? I've, I've created a few environmental documentaries. I can put them on Amazon and put out a press release. It's very simple. So don't believe any of these companies, but trade the hype, trade the price action. That's the biggest thing. Like I have all these Twitter haters that are like, how could you rip on my stock? How could you say M-A-R-K is a pump? Well, Again, if you're using the Stocks to Trade social media search tool and the breaking news tools, you can see the pumping in real time. It's not a debate whether it's happened or not. It's not an opinion. It's fact. It's backed up by data. It's backed up by words. Um, I don't want to call the pumpers out in case some of you guys are asking, like, why don't you call them out? I don't want them to stop. I love the game, okay? But at the same time, it's my job to educate newbies how the game works. So when there's a lot of pumping on a play like M-A-R-K, I'll call it out. When there's a lot of pumping on a play like K-T-O-V, I'll call it out. When there's a lot of pumping like uh, I've seen on S-P-O-M, I'll call it out. C-I-D-M, shady, shady press release, very similar to G-N-U-S. Um, again, that's how the game works. And I'm trying to, you know, kind of mold your mindset into not believing these companies and to expecting the worst. And yet still being okay with trading the volatility. So on CIDM, I think I bought it on, on this spike. You know, I, I missed this initial spike when the news first came out from 60 cents to a buck pre-market. I was just waking up, um, came down here, but then it started spiking again. And I thought that it could retest these highs around a dollar. So I was buying it in the low 80s. On my spike, it only got up to like 94, 95. I was out, you know, around 88, 89. Sorry, I put out a typo. You know, it said sold at 99. It was supposed to be 89. I'm sorry. Um, I'm not perfect either. There are so many freaking stocks moving. I corrected it like a minute later. Um, but it came down and then one more spike, it came out. And I put out a second sell alert, um, you know, even though I had no position because I was like, well, if I had any position, I would be selling here at 105. Um, and that actually turned out to be the best sell alert even though I didn't have a position. For me, it's not just about what are my actual trades, what are your actual trades, it's learning how to take advantage of this price action out of these patterns. Um, you know, like I said, it's not an exact science, I sold this one too soon, but I was on the right track, okay? CIDM, I correctly bought in the 80s, um, I just didn't necessarily give it enough time. And you know, with this kind of chop fest, I mean, it's not a huge surprise. SHRMF, it was a good morning panic dip buy. I just did not wait until the ultimate panic. So I was one panic too soon. SIML, you know, just up 190%. I was right to buy it near the market open. And I was right to buy the high of the day breakout because it could keep going to the twos. But I sold it in the twos because guess what? It has problems here at 0.022.
okay? I would love for it to break out, but some stocks, for whatever reason, they can't break out. Also, NNDM, let me just go over this. I'm getting a lot of questions about this. This one ran from a dollar all the way up to six yesterday, tanked all the way to 240 this morning because they did an offering at two bucks a share. They raised, I think, 35 million bucks. The stock still spiked to the fours, even after they sold $35 million worth of stock at two bucks a share. Um, even now at 360, I mean, this is this is crazy. Basically, the company said, hey, we're worth $2 a share. We just sold tens of millions of dollars of stock at $2 a share. And because this is such a crazy market, um, and I think because a lot of shorts have been, you know, squeezed on this one, they're still buying it. You know, if you're a short seller and you have to buy to cover your short position, um, it's no different than buying the stock. And so that's why the stock is here in the 360s, even though the company has basically put out a press release saying, hey, we're worth $2 a share. Um, that's the crazy market that we're in right now. And you just have to accept it. Um, other plays I missed. I mean, I made five grand, but again, there's so many more plays. Um, CCCL, freaking awesome. Um, again, former runner, former supernova. If you go back and look at history, a uh, nice little spike in here. Um, I was just busy with the other stocks. You know, people are like, why aren't you trading this? There's only so much I can do. I'm just one person. Um, but it's nice to see that this one keeps going. Um, I saw CREG was spiking in sympathy with it because this is another Chinese play, another former runner. Uh, VBIV, one of my buys uh, from a few days ago. Um, they're working on a vaccine. I was buying it. Where was it? Right in here. Um, thinking that it it had a chance to really spike. And it did go up a little bit, but it was weak. Now, like three days later, it's spiking more. Um, you know, M-A-R-K, I see uh, tweeting a lot. Like they had the LA, uh, I think it was like Beverly Hills Center, now like uh, in Vegas and the LA Convention Center. Put out a press release, guys, okay? I don't know. I don't know if you can send this video to like a pumper or something or, you know, somebody who works for MARK. I don't know what's going on with my charts. But please, tell them to put out a press release. Enough with these company tweets. You know, they're half-assed tweets. Um, I really want them to, to keep going. Oh, I'm, I'm looking at LEDS is spiking. That was just alerted to me. I'm on Stocks to Trade Mobile. I'm uh, one of the beta testers. Get excited for Stocks to Trade Mobile. Um, but I just got an alert that this one was spiking big too. And I'm doing this video lesson. So long story short, um, recognize that there are so many stocks moving. This is hot holiday trading. Um, it's okay to miss a play. You know, like if life gets in the way, if you're busy, if you're in another play and something else starts spiking, I mean, <laughs> literally every few minutes, there's another play. Um, but props to so many of you guys who, even if you're not necessarily trading or even if you're not capturing um, all of the profits or, or even, you know, some of the profits, maybe you're just paper trading, maybe you're just watching, at least you're witnessing and you're seeing how these speculative stocks uh, can really spike. I mean, for me, I didn't, I wasn't even thinking about trading PHUN into these halts today, but it's always educational to watch um, a company with a very questionable, uh, a very questionable company with a questionable press release still spike from the ones to the threes. So let that be a lesson to everyone who thinks that like companies have to just go up on fundamentals. Um, in a hot market, uh, a rising tide lifts all boats and a shady company like this can spike 200, 300%. Um, this is not the first, this is not the last. So I root for it. I want as many spikes as possible. Um, you know, KTOV, I, I see on the Stocks to Trade social media search uh, how much pumping there's been going on. I want the stock as high as possible. People like tweet at me like, oh, the stock is up. You didn't think it was gonna go up. I'm like, I want every stock as high as possible. I want pumps as high as possible. But at the same time, I recognize that they're pumps. By the way, SPOM, uh, props to a few of my students uh, who short sold. Jackaroo uh, got a short. You know, this one was spiking the past few days, um, but it just couldn't really break out. This is oftentimes a good sign of a top where you have a breakout. It can't hold it today. Nice morning panic. I missed the dip by here. There was a nice little, doesn't look like much on the chart, but you know, from 48 to 57. I mean, this is a nice little 15% bounce too into the panic. But whether you like dip buying, whether you like shorting, whether you like buying morning spikes, whether you like buying pumps, whether you like um, 
you know, I don't know, buying vaccine companies. I mean, there's so many different plays right now. So just wanted to make a video explaining what I see, how this is not an exact science, but again, um, you know, you don't have to be exact to make a lot of money. Like I was not exact today in my trading, but I took the meat of the move in CIDM, SIML, and SHM, SHRMF. I was just a little too early, but I still made a little profit because I took, frankly, I sized up, but um, this could have been a massive profit had I been uh, a little better with my timing. So I'll learn from this. And that's all you can do. Every single day I want you learning, whether you're trading, whether you're watching my trades, whether you're in the chat room, um, and again, if you're in my trading challenge, please come ready with questions, 4 to 6 p.m. Eastern today. Um, I'm gonna be doing a, a live webinar. Everyone asks me questions in there. I get so many questions all the time. I can answer it best in my live webinars and illustrate with charts. If you're not in my trading challenge, again, I'm gonna post the link just below this video. Get in it, two to four live webinars every week and all the archives of now 1,700 past webinars. Content galore, education galore, study up. I'll see you guys in the chat room.